up, guys? It's your girl, Rico Nasty, and you're tuned into Hot New Hip Hop. Everything's going pretty amazing. Honestly, like, if you would have told me that I would have gone even, like, number two and Shawn Mendes be number one from an album that I didn't tour, I wouldn't tour from, and just, like, all these things that normally make an album, that it would do so good without all the shit that makes an album. I was, I was very surprised, very, like appreciative of my fans. I always go into depth about how much I love them, but really like this was their time to really shine. I, I mean, I see them making like little stream parties and everyone that I follow has my album cover as their like profile picture. So I just like, I love all the support. I see all the messages and I just wanted to tell you guys, I love you guys. I see everything. You guys are killing shit right now. I'm at the stage where I feel like I don't know, I'm a little concerned, but I, I definitely feel like it's the mom in me that's concerned. I mean, we're talking about vaccines, we're talking about all this shit. And um, although I have to think about myself and I have to think about my future, I also have a kid who's gonna have to, this is the year, you know, upcoming year where he starts school. So like certain vaccines, certain things he would have to need to go to school. And I'm like, I don't know, I don't know about that. So. It's definitely a lot of like growing up being done and a lot of like decision making because like everyone else thinks that you could go out and it's like no coronavirus. And sometimes you really have to be the responsible one. Like, okay, I know we're all having fun, but like, where's your mask? Where's your fucking mask? Where's your mask? Where's your mask? And um, yeah, I guess it's pretty hectic right now. But one thing I will say is that I am extremely thankful to God and very blessed to be in the position that I am because I know that there's people who shit is way worse than mine. So I'm not gonna sit over here and pity party and oh, I can't go to the club. Nobody gives a fuck about that shit. Like there's real problems going on right now. So yeah, I mean, the only thing I can complain about is being in my house. I'm bored, I'm bored. I like, I've tr I played dress up too many times. It's not fun anymore. My reaction was definitely ego fueled. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest, like, I'm gonna be honest, I don't have nothing to lie about shit. And yeah, I was like, well, what about me? <laughs> the fuck? I know everybody's worrying about like, oh yeah, like, what about my job? What about this? What about that? My shit was like two months, before, like not two months, but like we was about to drop the album in the summertime. So when you hear coronavirus, no traveling, the only thing I'm hearing is my shit getting fucked up. So I will be honest, the first couple months, initially I didn't even know how bad it was. I didn't know how bad everything was until shit really started shutting down. And it was like, okay, we're really not shooting videos. We're really not doing this. When we started talking about backup plans, that's when it got rough. But I think when I really realized that the world was fucked was when I went to the grocery store. Yeah, that's when I knew that like, a bitch, it was the apocalypse, okay? Because, like, I'm going to the grocery store and I'm trying to get, like, baby wipes, chicken nuggets, toilet paper, like, all the regular shit, like, oodles and noodles, you know what I'm saying? Just the shit that's going to make you survive, right? Like, I'm not no Hollywood-ass bitch. I still eat noodles. I still eat my noodles with my eggs and my, you know, hot Cheetos. It don't matter, you know? So I'm going to the grocery store, like, bitch, I'm about to get all the hood snacks. And bitch, it wasn't no hood snacks. It wasn't nothing. It was nothing there. And I was really like, started getting scared because like, obviously I'm going in there trying to get hood snacks, but like, what about my son? Like, I started thinking about all the people who have babies, like little babies who still wear diapers. Cause when I went to go get the baby wipes, there was no diapers. There was no diapers. There was no Similac. There was no like, like my kid is old enough to not need those things, but Damn, I know I'm not the only person that's a mom. So that's when I really started being like, okay, we're gonna buy shit and we're gonna have to ration. And I just really started telling my son, like, you need to wash your hands. You need to wash your hands. You need to wash your hands. Like, we was just really big on washing your hands. And it was heartbreaking. Like, he always, like I said, he always goes everywhere with me. Like, Target, our Target runs, and it would make any other child jealous, okay? We run it up. So it goes from we go to we go to Target and that's his favorite thing to like, we get dressed to go to Target, baby, you can't come. You can FaceTime me. 
and tell me if you want something, but you cannot come to the stores with us. That shit is hard. It was heartbreaking, like, heartbreaking, like, so sad. Even, like, mom, you want to watch Cam? Like, he can't go back and forth from people's houses. My mom's older. I'm younger. I travel. Like, it was a lot. It was really a lot. Once you really step back and it's like, okay, this isn't about the industry. This isn't about an album. This is literally about people surviving. Like, people are... If they not gonna starve to death, they're gonna kill each other. Like it was getting bad like that, and then people was fighting over toilet paper. People was fighting over shit. People was stabbing people over stuff, and it's just like you just start realizing, like, damn, this world when it do, it's probably not gonna crumble now. But when it does, I pray that I'm me and my baby is long gone off this planet because people out here is evil and it's scary. Oh, no. Okay, bro. Like, honestly, I spent more money in the pandemic than I probably did when I was on the road. Because Instagram is the fucking Illuminati. And if you look at something on your Safari browser, you get ads for it. So they've been catching me in a trick bag this whole time. I can honestly say I spent too much money during quarantine, especially on Amazon. Jeff Bezos, cut me a check, bitch, because... <laughs> All your money is definitely my money and we being real. Like, it's just too much. Fuck Amazon. I love Amazon. I'm sorry. I love Amazon. But fuck y'all. Y'all got too much stuff to buy on their website. Why can I buy a frying pan and a wig at the same website? Make it make sense. Honestly, this year has been mad. Just like, you know, a period where we were all like, we get to stay home and do nothing. Hooray, hooray. And then as time goes on, you realize too much of anything is horrible. And um, nobody wants to stay at home all the time. And you just start realizing all of the things that you kind of appreciated. And I feel like with Nightmare Vacation, it was kind of like that. Like I was working, 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 working. Too much of anything isn't good. I started um, kind of like losing myself in the work. And I decided to call it Nightmare Vacation because although I kind of like wandered off into like all these different places and different styles of genres, music and shit, I kind of like still was able to come back home, find myself and just continue to be myself. Like just because you are educated in music doesn't mean that your music has to sound like you're educated in music. Sometimes you can just do what you like. And I feel like I named it Nightmare Vacation because I felt like people, people need something to scream to. When you think Nightmare Vacation, I just feel like it's a scream. Like, it's like, well, is it good? Is it bad? Like, ah, what the fuck is happening? It's too extreme. So, no, I just really wanted to give the album a name as dramatic as the emotions that were like showcased on it. Best part of the album finally being out is just the fact that I'm already working on the next one. <laughs> How many songs you got done? Of the next of the next album, shit, probably like six. And because when you really think about it, I stopped recording for Nightmare Vacation as soon as the what is that shit called? When I had to get it like cleared or sent to Apple Music and all that shit. So once I did that, it was just like, I mean, I'm a rapper now. I'm not gonna just stop recording. I kept recording and now I have all these songs and I'm like, okay, this is next level. This is, from reading like the reviews and shit, I'm like, all right, so like, oh God, I don't wanna like give my whole plan away, but like, I didn't wanna put too much different shit on Nightmare Vacation because I already seen the reaction with iPhone and Hold It. I mean, and Own It that people were like, how different is this about to be? And I started getting scared because I didn't want to lose my core fan base. So now that they're like, all right, this is Rico Rico. Like we got Rico Rico. I see so many people like, all right, I wonder what the real next phase is. And I already have the next phase locked and loaded and I'm ready to go and I'm just ready to keep going. And fuck that shit. No breaks, no days off. Um, I'm really dedicated to, I don't know, I feel like I'm in this shit now. Like before yeah. when I was working on the album, it felt like I was like light years away from my fans. But now I feel like I'm like, we right here. We know, we know what's happening. This shit about to go crazy. My mom is very clingy. My mom is super clingy. Like I'm gonna just keep it a bean. So when I tell my mom that I'm home, she doesn't understand 
that I still have to work. So like, it was really difficult, like finding that balance between like, okay, yes, I'm home and I love you guys. And I want to be with you guys because I like, get looking online, you're seeing everybody else with their family and all this shit. I'm like, but everybody else isn't dropping an album right now. So I'm still working. Like I'm still press runs, doing all this shit. So it was just really hard balancing like, family time with work because now more than ever the two were separated you know I didn't have to go to New York for a week and then I come home and that's my downtime like no I'm home already phoners back to back and then in the middle of these phoners my mom is calling me like so what you want to do today and yeah so and so's coming down I'm like mom I'm still working like this is not my time off like i'm still working so that shit was really rough like it was really rough always like even my friends like yeah when the like when the protests and stuff were going on they were like yeah i'm gonna go out and i'm gonna go protest it i'm like i wish i could go protest i do i wish i could but like I can't protest in the DMV. If I would've came to LA, I could've protested, but I couldn't protest in the DMV because it wouldn't have been about the protest. It would've been about rappers pulling up to the protest. And that's not what the protest was for. This is not like content, my nigga. This is like real world shit. So watching all my friends go, I look like the fucking squid with me. I'm just at home watching everybody's stories. Just like, wow. Like at least I got friends that make a difference. But still at the same time, I'm like, okay, we're doing fucking product calls and we're talking about merch. And, you know, it's just like, damn, I wish I could have had fun this summer, but it was worth it. This album was worth it and everything was worth it. My favorite type of music to record right now is definitely iPhone. Mm. I love that type of music because it's not, there's really no rules to it, you know? I mean, obviously the simple structure of a song, but like when you go in on those type of hyper pop beats, it's not like, I don't know. I don't feel obligated to be harsh, you know? A lot of other beats, I feel obligated to be harsh because that's who I am. But with this new hyper pop realm, it's like, I don't know, I get to kind of like explore the more lovey-dovey realm, but still fun. And I really am enjoying that a lot. Like there's a couple other songs like I found that are super sick but more rapping which i feel like is even harder like i don't think people are gonna they're gonna be like what the fuck because it's still rap but it's still like a hook and of course like i'm on so i'm excited to just oh god wait till you guys hear it i tried to pick the people who are most themselves than anyone else you know what i'm saying like when you look at trippy um Trippy's done like a couple of acting roles and even in his acting roles, he's still trippy. And I love that. I also love like him as well as me. He has a soft side, he has a hard side. I love that. Same with Amine. Amine has a really like, he's like a, I don't know. He has a really good way of blending into whatever vibe fits his voice. And that's something that I kind of look up to. So I just kind of like, I look for people who are genuinely themselves, like, when you turn their music off, they're still that person. And I also look for people who are like unapologetically don't give a fuck. Like, you know what I'm saying? If I invite them to the studio, and now I'm more so talking about females, like um, this morning was the first time I've ever been without a wig in front of a female rapper. And it was PP cocaine. And we're just like sitting on the phone, no wig, no makeup on, just like, what's up, bitch? <laughs> Looking like two thumbs, like looking like one and two. What's up, girl? Like, but you wanna know? I I feel like that's like I don't know. It's empowering, and I I've always wanted that relationship like that. Like, we're all just bitches in makeup and wigs. We all look the same without it. Nobody's better than nobody. We all just got rich, get rich or die trying, bitch. You hear me? So it's just like vibes. Like I I love Suki Hana. I feel like Suki Hana definitely is like. She's kind of like everybody's fairy godmother. She's kind of like everybody in the back of everybody's head. Like, she do the shit you might be scared to do, but you really want to do it. That's why I love her. Because even me, people are like, you're so crazy, you're so crazy. Suki, do, she be doing shit that I'm scared to do. And she makes it look amazing. And she makes it look fucking crazy. And I love her for that. Like, it's inspiring. And even with Ruby Rose, like, slim bitches stand up. You know what I'm saying? It's very important. We get some more representation out here. <laughs> You know what I'm saying for my skinny bitches. So it was very important. I put her on there too, because I feel like 
she definitely does a great job of em em embodying that. Like, I'm still sexy. Your niggas still want me. But I don't have big ass melons. She got a fat ass though. So that makes that cool. But you know what I'm saying? Like, she's, she's still slim. And I really love, like, I love her messaging. I love, like, how everything, like, her voice is so deep and it kind of contrasts the sexual, like, the sexiness of her. Um, yeah, I feel like everybody on this album, and then let's talk about, about Gucci Man. Like, Gucci Man is definitely a fucking legend. And I feel like nobody has a real debut if they don't get a legend on there. So big shout out to Guap for being a part of this. And um, for even saying my name, let's say that. Because, like, Gucci probably dishes out features all the time. But for him to say, Guap and Rico Nasty pulled up the whole fat ass bitch. That was it for me. I, I was done. I was happy. I was satisfied with that. Flo Millie was supposed to be on the Smack a Bitch remix, but Flo Millie is a busy woman and she just dropped her project, which went amazing as well for that to be her first project. I'm so proud of that girl. I love her so much. Like, I love me some Flo Millie. I feel like all of us do. All of the female rappers are definitely rooting for her. She came in the game, been herself, still herself. I love watching her style evolve. Like the other day, she had on like this colorful dress and, I, and like these boots and I'm like, <sighs> My bitches wear high fashion. Alexa, play body rich high fashion. Like, I'm proud of her. Like, I feel like I'm watching my little sister go to the prom. Like, this bitch be pulling out the looks. She be letting these bitches have it. And I'm here for flow. So let's give each other flowers. I'm here mm. for her. Love her. It was a lot of dates getting switched around. It was a lot of uh, broken promises. <laughs> A lot of like on, on my end, not nobody else, but like, yeah, guys, I'm gonna do this. And then I like say it and then I go back to my team, like, yeah, because we can do that, right? We can do that, right? And they're like, Rico, what the fuck? And I'm like, I don't know, but we can do it, right? We can make that happen. So it's just a lot of like wires being crossed and he said, she said, and maybe I said, and then I didn't want to do it anymore. And then just like, you know, a whole bunch of shit that, I mean, it's album time. But um, as far as real world shit, I've been treated fairly. I mean, I've really like, I've enjoyed being home with my son more than anything. Like, just like, I miss him so much right now, but just being around him, watching him, grow up he's a real person now he really wakes up in the morning he has his routine um <laughs> don't get in the middle of his routine because he don't like that but he's not like three where i'm leaving him and he doesn't really have the concept of time like oh mom's gone now he be he got an ipad for his birthday and he knows how to facetime people so yesterday he called me like five times like, he's just calling me like what are you doing what are you doing? And and I'm just like, I'm looking forward to just him getting older and just like us being best friends because that's what it is, yo. That's my bestie. That's that's my road dog. Like, I swear, we do everything together. He be calling my mom and my mom like be working. So she be like denying him. And she said that he went and knocked on her door like, why are you rejecting my calls? Like, he is so funny. Like, yo, I feel like, Speaking it into existence, you know, the little boy Ryan has a show. I feel like my son can have a show. He's so funny, like, genuinely funny, bro. Like, this man don't have no business. He might be a comedian. Like, I'm I'm looking at boy Ryan. He's funny enough to be a comedian, for real. Like, he's really too damn funny, bro. Like, I'm nowhere near that funny. I wonder where he got it from. I just saw her talking about retiring, and I'm like, the good ones go if you stay too long. Like, I feel so bad because I'm like, I stand Tiana Taylor. I play Tiana Taylor on the regular. And her last project was like, kind of what got me through tour low key, just like helped me stay motivated, moving all the time. And, and, and not just moving like excited, but still feeling like a bad bitch. Like work this pussy is like, if I'm ever in a rush, I put that on and I get the job done, okay? like. She definitely, uh, let me also give her her flowers too. Like, Tiana, if you talk to any of these young up and coming rap girls, me included, we're all inspired by you. And we love you and we appreciate you. And bitch, you had the baddest Sweet 16 that I ever seen, okay? So, we really grew up on you, man. So, if you don't want to make music anymore, I'm going to still stream whatever's out. But when that new project come out, because I feel like she's a creative person, she can't just not record. 
like even with her clothes and her businesses, like I, I, I feel like we'll hear from her soon. I really hope we do. Don't let these bitches get you down, Tiana. You're that bitch. You better tell these hoes to shut their petunias. The biggest thing I've learned is you work faster and you work better when you don't hold grudges. Straight like that. I think in the industry, like, people think, like, your beef is, like, their beef and, like, I don't know, it's like weird almost, and you kind of have to like step away from that and just realize like you are your own person. And although you might not like somebody, like there's a lot of people that you're not gonna like. So you can't like, I don't know, early on, I really felt like it was just one of them things where I was just super, not wanting to be liked, but I cared about what people thought of me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would be like, so I wonder, like, I wonder what they thought. And then it would just make me kind of like, I don't know, feel super weird when shit was over. So it just kind of got to the point where I stopped caring and I just started being myself more. And then when I did that, shit got easier. Talking to people got easier. Making friends got easier. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just little things. It was definitely not like a drastic change, but when you going somewhere afraid to give your opinion on something because you're afraid that somebody won't like your opinion or that they'll, I don't know, like the industry's small. So you can say, oh, I didn't like that outfit. And then that person could have just worked with them. And then, you know, you kind of walk on eggshells. So once you realize like, there's no need to do that. Nobody likes everybody's outfit. Nobody likes everything that everybody does. And it just is what it is. Like people like certain shit, some people don't. And you kind of like find your own place. You know, you find your where you belong, not where you think you belong or where, you know what I'm saying? You saw this person go, so you think you deserve to be there too. No, like you just find your real space where you feel most comfortable. You can create that. And I'm very thankful that I found that herb because it's a long time coming. I think Rage Hate came out a little bit after because like I remember even when I recorded that song, like, I was scared to put it out because I felt like shit would change. I felt like my fan base would change drastically and I felt like everything would change and it did. Like I was totally right. My fans went from majority bubblegum transitioning, just hearing the smack a bitch to like, I created, like, I just found, like, so many ragers through that song. So many people were just like, oh, my God. And uh, it kind of put a pressure on me that it felt like the darker fans needed me more, if you get what I'm saying. My Bubblegum Trap fans, they didn't really need me. There was more people making what I was making, and they didn't need the message. Like, I wasn't rapping about getting like overcoming things besides Tales of Taco Bell. And I felt like I lost that with Sugar Trap too. So when I was able to make Rage, that's when I started finding like, even, okay, I was meeting some people like, I don't like this. I don't fucking like this. Why is she trying to make music like this? And why is she, why is she this? And why is she that? She not being herself. And they kind of like, once I ignored it, I kind of really realized what was making me make this music. And it was like being frustrated from being an outcast, from trying to fit in, you know, doing everything you think is gonna make you fit in and you still don't fit in. Why? Because you're different. So you have to own that shit. And I started owning it. I started not being afraid that I was the rage scream girl. That's what it was like. That's the girl that be screaming. Like it went from, oh my God, why is that my name? To like, yes, I'm the bitch that be screaming. La, la, la. Da, 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 da. And there's more freedom in it. There's more like confidence and just owning like that's what it is. Instead of doing shit like worry, oh, what are they gonna say about me when I leave? It's like you know what they're gonna say about you. You know it. And if you don't know it, then stop thinking about it because it doesn't fucking matter. The only thing that matters is you, how you feel about you. Mm. And you're just happier. Like you just move different. You don't hold grudges. You don't like put expectations on people to be your friend. Like you're just you like well El Maquillage had sent me like this big crazy PR package it was like so much makeup and at first I was like okay who is El Maquillage oh, who they think they just sending me all this before I kind of know the business like people only send me big packages like that when they want to work so 
I'm like, okay, let me not just take cute videos and stuff and promote them, but let me actually use their stuff. And I fell in love, like instantly. As soon as I started using their um, concealers, their foundations, that was like the first thing that sold me, obviously, because I feel like you can't bang makeup and not have good concealer foundation. That bitch, that's the foundation, literally. Your foundation trash, you can't build off that. Like, it's bad, you take it off. So their foundation is fucking amazing and they have this um, great way of testing it. Like, you could legit, get matched for your shade online and i don't know if people have gotten theirs back but mine has been right and i've tried it like in the winter and the summertime both times my shade has matched my skin exactly and they do it online so you just get the shit shit to you i fell in love with that i love technology forward things i love like you know, I travel a lot. So being able to get foundation and not have to send your assistant in the store to match your shade or, you know, like you could just get shit to you. That's one more thing I asked for, you know? But um, then they were like, okay, so we really want to collab with you on eyeshadow. I was like freaking out. The whole process of it was like a year and a half. And then because Corona hit, she kind of fucked everything up. But after I got my PR package, I had a meeting with them and they had like a bunch of different eyeshadows. They had laid out a couple palettes that they think thought that I would want to go with. They had um, different packaging um, ideas on a projector screen. And I kind of picked one of everything like I picked from everything that they gave me and I made it my own and I think that's probably my favorite part about working with them as well is like most times when you do collabs they have like okay so this is collab one and then like this is collab two and this is collab three and you pick those options and then you just slap your name on it but this was really like line for line row for row named everything came up with the design I wanted into it. And then they never was like, okay, Rico, you're doing too much. Like when I asked for the lifeline in my shadow, they were like, oh yes. Like they just kept pushing me to go crazy, go crazy, go crazy. And um, that's really important when I'm doing, when I'm putting my name on something, it needs to be just as crazy as the musical experience. So I'm very happy that they allowed me to do that. And if you haven't gotten your maquillage yet, baby, you like it lacking because it's really like that's my favorite shit right now i'm using it all of my looks if you go on my instagram right now you see a look you like ever since the maquillage just came out i've been wearing it so i don't mean it to my own horn but you know what i'm saying you like the looks you get what you pay for you hear me the plan for 2021 is to i mean obviously we've learned what it takes to make a project during a pandemic so and now we just find the loopholes. We find loopholes and we work through that. We work through it. We, um, If we have to shoot music videos with the extras all in one scene and me and another, then that's what the fuck we have to do. But we will get this shit done because that's what entertainment is. Entertainment is making the impossible possible. So if you can't do that, then I think you picked the wrong, you picked the wrong field. So I'm looking forward to sharing more music with you guys and more videos. We still have music videos dropping from Nightmare Vacation. So let me not get too carried away with this next project. Nightmare Vacation is out now. Um, the Shut the Fuck Up music video is out now. And that was probably my favorite video to shoot this whole entire year. I actually got to fight someone. So that was like a breath of fresh air. I treated him like coronavirus. Um, <laughs> For the Nasty Mob, I just want you guys to continue to be powerful, amazing young women and men that you are. You guys are creative, you guys are awesome. Don't doubt yourself. And if anybody is watching this and you want to be a musician, you can do it. And when you get famous, make sure you tell everybody that I said you can do it. But you can do it, baby. You can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Anybody can do this. Just as long as they don't let the naysayers get to them. You got to have some tough skin. You could do it. Nightmare Vacation out now. I don't give a fuck what a hater got to say about it. We are number two. And that is major for a person who doesn't get radio play. Curses in every single hook. We breaking records. Like, we're literally fucking breaking records. I am the... I curse. I curse so much. Like, I curse so much and I will never change. And I'm not going to release clean versions because people need to hear this shit. They need to hear this. And yeah, bro, don't ever let nobody tell you your music's not clean enough. Thank God to fucking DSPs and 
all this online streaming. You don't need the radio. You need the radio. You do. But you don't need the radio to be heard, to be seen, to build a fan base. So do what the fuck make you happy. Coronavirus is trying to make all of us miserable. If fucking spit burgers make you happy, bitch, you better blow some spit burgers. I can't. I can't deal with the miserableness. We need to get some energy. Like, come on, guys.